the first otherwise should have been just today's videos. So yeah, after <coughs> hosting Nepal part two, it's like I was kind of traumatised by it all and today's were going to be quite shortish. So yeah, it's the first of the two we're going to use his four pages on, so yeah. Here we go. There's the ancient source as we're on Turkmenistan today. For Central Asia, as the ancient sources say that Turkmenistan history happened during the early Paleolithic era, as numerous stone tools have been found relating to this period, as remnants of settlements of hunters and fishers are related to the Neolithic era. We've known that the most known of them are the Isabel Grottos in the eastern Caspian coast. Caspian sea coast, sorry, we're just eastern. As the southern Turkmenistan is a place of the earliest agriculture and cattle husbandry in Central Asia. As a say, Tun, a village in the found near Ashgabat. It's the most ancient agricultural settlements dated at around 6000 BC. As ancient civilizations developed and prospered in the territory of what is now Turkmenistan in about 1000 BC, the states of Maragina, Parthia, Midia, it all existed there. And then they were conquered by the Persians in the 6th century BC and were split were part of the Persian Empire uh, as a part of the Akan. Achaemenid M dynasty, which was in turn conquered by Alexander the Great in the 4th century BC. As after Alexander's empire collapsed, the territories were possessed by his heirs. Selevid dynasty. As in, and in the 7th to 8th centuries, the AD now. The territory of Turkmenistan was taken by Arabs who introduced Islam. In the 9th and 10th centuries, the Turkmen lands were part of Takhirid, Samanid states, and the 11th to 13th century was a part of the Seljuk Empire. And in the 13th century, the country was conquered by Mongolian armies led by Genghis Khan, who annexed territories of Turkmenistan in his own. Empire and the Great Silk Way, which was a symbol of cultural integration of the West and the Orient, used to cross through the modern territory of Turkmenistan as a standing caravan trading caravan started in Sinai, Sinai, and then followed across Central Asia and India up to the shores of the Black and Mediterranean Seas. And in the be beginning of the 16th century, northern Turkmen nations spread across all over the coast of the Caspian Sea, as the uh, Mangishalak Peninsula, Erstuart and Balkani, northwestern suburbs of Khazam Oasis, Lake Sarakamish shores and the Kar Karakum Desert. All, they all took possession of the lands and the oasis of southern Turkmeni, South Turkmenistan. And during this period, the majority of the Turkmen nations were semi nomadic, combining agriculture and irrigated lands with cattle breeding. And they both cattlemen and farmers in each cattlemen and farmers in each clan. And agriculture was a prerogative poor, of poorer clan members. And in the 17th and 19th century to the 19th century, the territory of Turkmenistan was subject to controversy. Among the Persian Shah, Kiva Khan and Bukhara Emir. As a result, many Turkmen nations were divided among the three states Iran, Kiva, and Bukhara. And most of the territory of Turkmenistan was owned by Iran, the Iranian Shah Nadir, and he suppressed Turkmen resistance, several, several, severely by killing and enslaving, confiscating castle and property. And in 1747, Nadir Shah, Shah was killed, and his 
state collapsed in Turkmen tribes which had temporarily left the north came back to south Turkmenistan. And during the same period, like Saria Kamyushk, and the shores of which Tur the Turkmen tribes lived, started to dry up gradually, and they were forced to move south into the Kopet Daga Dag area and there from southeast to the valleys of Morgab and the Amudaya. And from the beginning of the 17th century, the nomads camp of North Turkmen and the city of Khorasan were subject to imprudent attacks of the Kalmyks, who had come from the east in search of unoccupied land. And at the end of the 17th century, the Tur some Turkmen tribes, exhausted by the attacks of the Kalmyks and warriors of Kiva Khan, Felt Russian citizenship and moved to the North Caucasus. And as before the entering the Russian Empire, Turkmen had occupied the entirety of the territory of today's Turkmenistan, as well as some of the areas of modern day Iran and Afghanistan. And some of them lived in Ustyurt and Mangashirak, together with the Kazakh nomads. And like the late in the like in the Middle Ages, Turkmen consisted of numerous tribes, which in their turn were subjected to multi-stage subdivision systems. And like the largest tribes were Tekes, Yomuts, Esaias, Sayaks, Sayuris, Goklands, and Chodas, to say the least, and up to the 1880s, patriarchal slavery had existed. As all Turkmen were divided into thoroughbred slaves and concubines. Except for all these basic categories, there were always arrival of the tribes and of descendants of subdued Iranian speaking population. And all the categories, except for thoroughbreds, were not considered of valued members of a society. And in 1869, the east coast of the Cap Caspian Sea, the Russians founded a part of Krasnodarsk. And by the middle of 1880, the territory became part of the Russian Empire, which had suppressed the Turkmen revolt in 1881 when the notorious Turkmen Gyaktele fortress surrendered. And as a part of the Russian Empire, Turkmenistan. And we're going to be involved with the Russian capitalist capitalism economy system, which is more pro progressive uh, in comparison to our chaos social order of Turkmen tribes. And in 1880-85, the Trans-Caspian Railway was built on the territory of Turkmenistan, which resulted in the capital inflow of Central Asia, and a number of new cities such as Krasnodarsk. Ashkabad and so on and so forth emerged as a capital territory of Turkmenistan, along with industrial enterprises was before the revolution of 1917, the elements of capitalism started to appear within the patriarchal feudal system. And after the Russian of the Soviet power, the Soviet power was officially proclaimed the first in a trans-Caspian area. And then in the other cities and settlements around of Turkmenistan, and on the 30th of April 1918, by the degrees of the Fifth Congress, Soviets, Turkmenistan Soviets, into the Turkmenistani, Turkestani, Independent Soviet Socialist Republic, was established with the structure of the RSF. SR, bit of a mouthful compared to others. The basic party part of the territory of Turkmenistan was included into the Trans Caspian area. And in July of the same year, 1918, the Socialist Revolutionaries and Mensheviks, supported by Englishmen, assumed power and the English armies invaded the area. And the civil war and foreign intervention lasted for about a year and a half. And in July 1919, the Red Army occupied Ashgabat. And in February 1920, across Novodisk, the English arm 
me were ousted from Turkestan. And on the 27th of October 1924, the Turkmen SSR was established. In February 25, the Declaration of the Establishment of the Turkmen SSR, a decision on the voluntary joining of the structure of the USSR was adopted. As a during the post war years, Turkmen minister Stan suffered a terrible disaster, and in 1948, a destructive earthquake took place in Ashgabat. But, and nonetheless, back to the effective of all Union republics, the people managed to restore and modernize the national economy of the republic and successfully create an oil and uh, raise its own oil and gas complex, as well as build the Karakum. Canal. As a contemporary Turkmenistan history started in 1990 after the disintegration of the USSR, as on the October the 27th, 1991, Turkmenistan declared itself independent and proclaimed the first president of Turkmenistan as Zapamurat Niyazov, or known also as Turkmenbashi. As a president, is the supreme commander in chief of the armed forces of Turkmenistan, and the chairman of the Democratic Party of Turkmenistan. And he has the right to appoint, right to appoint ambassadors and high-ranking officials, to so executive executive authority, including heads of the ministries and departments. As the most significant milestone in the modern history of the Turkmen people, are the Day of Independence for Turkmenistan, uh, which happened on the 27th of October 1991, the Day of, Constitu of the Constitution of Turkmenistan, May the 18th, 1992, and the Day of Singing of the Re Resolution of General Assembly of the United Nations and the Permanent Neutrality of Turkmenistan in December the 12th, 1995, and the most significant event of 2000. One was the creation of the Ruk Nam, the spiritual, ethical, and aesthetic code of Take My Son, written by Sophomore Niazov or Turkmen Bashi. And the ethic structure of the ancient population of the Turkmen people was not uniform in ancient times, cattle darkers. As Masabets won the territory, and in the Middle Ages, they came from Igles, Turkic speaking tribes, and who played an important role in the formation of Turkmen and their language. And in the 9th to 11th century, the territory was subject to Seljuk attacks, and presumably in the 9th centuries, the parts of the Turkic speaking, speaking population living in the steppe started calling themselves Turkmen and they settled in agricultural areas and their culture was closer connected to the Iranian speaking population of Khorazam and Khorbasan and it was only in the 14th to 15th century that the Turkmen nationality was finally developed by the time the merged settlers of the Oguz steppe tribes were settled Iranian speaking population of Northern Khorasan was completed in yeah. And if I'm right, Sapan Morat Niazov died somewhere around 2005-2007. So yeah, someone else has been in control of Turkmenistan since then and from what I can I I'll just get <laughs> get the name off for you. As I didn't quite put it in then script and all, but I think it's something like Gurban Ghuli Birdie Mukhamidov, something like that, but it's like a really, really long name. Gurban Ghuli Birdie Mukhamidov um, and from the picture they're showing me, he looks like a cheerful guy, but um, yeah. And yeah, 
but moving on to back onto the script. I've only got like a small little bit of her language. And yeah, the Turkmen language is a member of a Turkic language family with a subfamily of the uh, Altic language. As Turkmen is spoken in Turkmenistan, parts of the neighbouring Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, and few people in like Iran and Afghanistan. As a member of the people of the southwestern or Oguz branch of the Turkic language, <coughs> in literary tradition, dates back to the 14th century AD. I say the Turkmen writers bound to use the Jangatai literary language of the southwest of southeastern Jangatai Turkic language branch. And in the eighteenth and nineteenth centuries was exclusively Turkmen literary language began to emerge and a new development began after the Russian Revolution of nineteen seventeen. With the introduction of a literary language based on the spoken Turkmen. The language was written in with the Arabic alphabet until 1927, when the alphabet, Latin alphabet was has modified from the Turkic for the Turkish language was adopted, and in the Soviet Union, the and in the Soviet Union, the later Latin alphabet was replaced by the Cyrillic alphabet in 1940. And yeah. And I'm recognising a few of the names from the legends, sorry. As I now moving on to legends. As a yeah. Here we go with the legend. As a horse for Turkmen has always been a sacred animal, as yes, we are talking about an animal again today. As it was difficult to imagine a Turkman about a horse, and the horse is an unequitable member of the Turkmen family. They say, as the Turkmen have preserved careful and anxious attitudes towards horses for millennia. And in the 5th century BC, the father of history, Herodotus, wrote the ancestor of the Turkmen had selected a horse as a symbol of the sun because they believe that the father, fastest star in the sky should match the fastest animal on earth. And the image of a winged horse is mentioned in the Turkmen National Ephesus as their death stands, as Turkmen's pride and main attraction of their country are uh, Akhatekin horses. The best of, I suppose are like the best horses in the world, as Turkmen believe they originated from their he from like heavenly horses and all. And there are a lot of legends about Akhatekins being descendants of a wild seahorse. One of the legends around it is like in Turkmenistan mountains there used to be a spring from which an unusual horse came out each time the herd of horses was at a drinking place and time passed and mares of the herd gave birth to colts. Big, big superb and beautiful. And when Turkmen settled and broke into in one of the them they discovered that it was in fact flying between heaven and earth, obedient to the bridle and swift. So yeah, there's a legends of the heavenly and sea horses which ostensibly were ancestors of Akalturkins, uh echoes of a rich mythology of the Turkmen people. In the sense of Possibly the first ever horse breeders, as famous fast like the as a famous fast like the wind. Our Kalatikins have glorified a country in the whole world. Even the state of Emblem is decorated with an Akalatikin racer. This is a really unique breed, breed as it's fast, graceful, with chisels to one like net and slim leg legs. As these horses are surprisingly strong. Even Every year in Turkmenistan on the last Sunday of April, the festival of Turkmen races is held, and there everyone can guess, become acquainted, acquainted with unique breed and visit numerous horse competitions, both classical and national sports, with protection of horses. As there are a lot of legends about Akal Turkin's fidelity, as a horse has always been a, of a spiritual value to, to, to the Turkmen people. 
as Agharagamax were considered to, as an attribute to well-being and prosperity but nonetheless were re never regarded as a material asset or since nobility as fidelity and friendship are priceless as the qualities of our famous Akhaltakin horses possess as determined peoples ra praised Atharatekins in legends and songs and they built their monuments as the women have given the work to give the world a precious gift as they not not only were the unsurpassable breed of horses having tamed horses long ago but they put their hearts into him and made a Agamak a reliable helper and faithful friend who could catch the wind in step and never betray nor deceive. So yeah, that is Turkmenistan for you. Now a bit of a brief, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and yeah, I'll see you all soon. So bye for now, as I've still got one more country in the news to do today. So yeah, bye.